So whether you want to admit it or not, short form vertical content for social media has exploded in the last couple of years. So whether you're talking about Instagram reels, TikTok, or even YouTube shorts, social media platforms have been consistently pumping this type of content and trying to get more people to watch so that they will stay on those apps for longer. So what does that mean for video creators like us? Well, we need to ask ourselves the question, are we willing to adapt to this new form of content creation just to stay up to date with the trends? Or is it something that we don't need to care about and hope that everything just works out? Now, unfortunately, the truth is for platforms like Instagram is that they just don't promote photo posts anymore, which is furiously annoying. Now, when you post photos, Instagram is actually prioritizing things like reels over that. So today I wanna to jump into Adobe Premiere Pro so I can show you how you can edit your own Instagram reel so that you can stay up to date with the new social media trend. Now, funny thing is, is I've also never really made an Instagram reel before, so this will be a learning experience for us both. All right, so we're gonna start by jumping into Premiere Pro. As you can see, I've already made a new project here and I have a couple of folders inside. So the first folder is just the footage that I've shot with my Sony camera. I have a couple of music tracks that I'm gonna choose from, and I also have a couple of graphical assets as well as a sequence that I've already created. But just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sequence. I'm gonna to go to the top, go to File, go to New. We're gonna create a new sequence. If you go to the second tab here under Settings, we are going to select our frame rate, which is 23.976 for the case of my footage. And then as you can see, 1920 by 1080 is usually the standard and Instagram reels are actually just swapped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to 1080 by 1920 and that should give us a nine by 16 aspect ratio, which is essentially vertical. Everything else looks good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And as you can see here, our canvas looks like it should, like an Instagram reel. So really quick shout out, something that's gonna help us a lot while we create this Instagram reel is downloading a graphical asset from a website called amplify11.com. I'll make sure to drop the link in the description below, but essentially they've created this really cool frame guide or safety guide so that you know what your lines are or your safety guides are for your Instagram reel. Because although the aspect ratio for Instagram reel is nine by 16, there are a couple important guides that you need to know about, including how it'll look on your Instagram profile and how it will show up if you just post it as a reel that shows up on your feed. Great, so now that we're back into Premiere, I'm gonna go ahead and find that file that I already saved. I'm gonna import it, and you can see here it says real template, and that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this on the third layer of my timeline and stretch it out. This is gonna be a pretty short reel, so just a heads up, Instagram reels, the maximum length is a minute long. I'm gonna go ahead and say this one's gonna be about 30 seconds long, so I'll trim it down here. And there we go. So now as you can see, as I scroll over, we have this one layer that's kind of giving us our uh, safety guides. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go through my footage and quickly just kind of piece together a 30, 25 second to 30 second sequence with some clips that I shot from a recent road trip we went on. Okay, cool. I have a basic layout here for my sequence. I've included all my clips. This was all shot in S-Log3, so obviously it is not color graded. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go through and fine tune everything and add a musical track. Now with Instagram Reels, you can add music in Instagram itself. You can pick from a huge database of popular artists that they have, or if you prefer, you can add your own music in Premiere, which is what I'm gonna do right now. And a quick pro tip here, what I'm doing is I'm actually unlinking each video and audio clip and extending the audio a little bit and fading it in a little bit early. What this does is it kind of blends each clip a little bit more smoothly. Rather than having the audio for each clip start as soon as the clip appears video wise, I'm starting that audio a little bit early. So things like the noise of a footstep or things like her making sounds while making coffee, that sound fades in a little bit earlier than the visual. So this is what it looks like when you do that. So now that I've gone ahead and blended all of my audio together, I'm gonna to go to the very beginning, select the first clip, and I'm gonna hit Control or Command D, which adds a cross dissolve at the very beginning. I'm gonna shorten it. 
which just gives it a quick fade at the beginning. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same at the end. So I'll select my clip, Control D, adds a cross dissolve at the end there. And I'm gonna just fade this out a little bit earlier than the actual audio. And then I'm gonna let the audio trail just a little bit at the end there. So now what I have is I have a little sequence put together. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up some of these visuals now. So now I'm happy with the timing of all the clips, but if you notice, the one thing that isn't looking that good is the actual framing. Now, these were all shot in standard horizontal 16 by nine aspect ratio in 4K, which means when you flip them into a canvas that is nine by 16, you lose a lot of the real estate that you had before. And that's one of my personal qualms with, you know, vertical video, but there is a way that we can at least frame it up so it looks better than it does now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first clip. I'm gonna navigate to effects controls at the top left here. And as you see, I'm gonna go ahead and just scale down my video and then scale it back up right about at 89. So what that means is I'm getting a little bit more real estate there. And then with the position sliders, I'm gonna go ahead and find the best position for this clip. So now when we play that first one back, that looks a lot better for that first clip. And now I'm just gonna go through the rest of them and frame them up so they look a lot better. Awesome, that is looking way better already. So the only thing left to really do now is do the color correcting. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I'm not gonna give you a full, really in-depth breakdown for how I grade S-Log3 on the FX6. I am planning on making a video like that down in the future, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just run through the color correction process really quickly. So for me, it's pretty basic, especially for something that's just gonna be an Instagram reel. I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna make sure the size is right. So I'm going to make sure 1080 by 1920. Yep. Click it. I'm going to go ahead and drag it right over my video clips. And I'm actually going to hit alt and then click on it and drag up one, which duplicates it immediately, which is really cool. And I'm going to go ahead and jump to my color panel. So what I usually do for the first clip is just add one of uh, the Phantom LUTs by Joel Famolaro. He created a bunch of LUTs for the Sony cameras. They're all super fantastic and amazing, and I love them very much. The one that I typically start with is the neutral FX6 look. And as you can see with that LUT on, we now have a much, you know, closer to realistic looking image as the day that we shot it. And just scrubbing through, I'm actually pretty happy with the exposure levels on all of this. If I do need to change anything a little bit later, then I can do that. But for now, I'm gonna jump to that second layer and I'm gonna go ahead and add another LUT. And this one is one that I use quite a bit. If you watch my channel, you know that I use the uh, Big Trouble in Little China LUT by Film Riot quite a bit. So let's go ahead and grab that one and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. And there we go, looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag the intensity slider down a little bit. I think 75 looks pretty good. So now let's take a look at what we got. Now that is not too shabby if I don't say so myself. There's a couple of small things that I want to do. As you can see, the footage is a little bit shaky on this last clip and a few others. So I just want to go through and tighten up a couple of things like that. And I'm going to use the warp stabilizer effect in Premiere Pro, and it's a pretty simple process. So I'm just going to go to our effects tab, type in warp stabilizer. I'm going to go ahead and drag it to the final clip there. And on the effects control panel, I'm gonna go ahead and change the smoothness to just two. You really don't have to apply a lot of this. In fact, anything past 5% looks really jittery and weird. So I highly suggest not doing more than 5%. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and jump through and add it to a couple of other clips that I think needed to be smoothed out a little bit. Amazing, so I've gone ahead and added the warp stabilizer effect to any of the clips that needed to be smoothed out a little bit. And I've also gone through and dropped the exposure on a couple of clips that I thought were too bright. So at this point, it's safe to say that I'm pretty much done with the Instagram reel. 
Now, what I will do before I export this out, remember that one real template that we downloaded earlier? I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And as you can see, it kind of shows up as an overlay over our entire footage. My suggestion for you is to absolutely use this and go through to make sure that these safety guides aren't cutting out anything important. Um, anything, especially if you're using text, you wanna make sure that all your text is legible. And something to think about is, if people are watching this video on the Reels or the Explore page, they're gonna see everything within this window. But if you decide to post it on your profile and it shows up at, on the main scroll page, then they're only gonna see what's in those red bars. So something that you definitely wanna consider is making sure no text is getting cut off. You wanna make sure that nobody's head is getting cut off. And just in general, make sure that all the important information on your reel is gonna be there. So once you've gone ahead and okayed everything and you're happy with how it looks and it all falls within the safety guides, you can go ahead and click that layer off. And we're gonna go ahead and zoom out on our timeline here so we can see everything. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit O so I can make an out point. And I'm just gonna bring that right here, right after the music fades out or the uh, sound effects fade out right here. And then I'm gonna go to the beginning and hit I, which will set an endpoint. And just one last little scrub through to make sure everything is looking good. And yep, it is. So I'll select my timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control M, which is gonna bring up the export layer. And what I'll do here is just match the source with a high bit rate. I'm gonna make sure that my width is 1080 and my height is 1920. And I'm gonna go ahead and label this and save this where I'd like it to go. And we'll name it Instagram Reel. I'm gonna hit save. And now that everything is looking good, let's go ahead and export. So now that this has been exported, there's a couple of ways that I have used in the past to get this video file from my computer onto my phone. The one that I use still to this day and that I kind of swear by is Google Drive. So what I will do is I will hop into Google Drive and I'm just gonna go ahead and upload that video clip that we just exported. Beautiful, and now that it's exported, I'm gonna go ahead and jump onto my phone. I have the Google Drive app installed and signed in already to the same account that I just uploaded that file to. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop into Google Drive on my phone and I will navigate down to where that video file is. I'm gonna hit the three dots on the right side and then I'm gonna go to send a copy. Now, I know it sounds weird, but when you hit send a copy, you can navigate down to the bottom and you'll see a bunch of different options of what you can do here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save video. And as you can see, it is being downloaded to my phone directly. And so once that is done, it's actually gonna appear in my photos app down at the bottom here. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and play it back and make sure everything still looks good and sounds good. So now let's jump into Instagram where we can post it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the top and click the plus icon. I'm gonna go and hit reels and I'll navigate to the bottom left where there is a little square with a plus icon and this is where I will click on my video clip. And now I'm gonna hit next. And as you can see here, this is what it looks like right before you're about to post. So you got a cover photo. You can always change this if you would like. And just so you know, when this shows up on your Instagram grid, it's just gonna be a one by one ratio. This is what it looks like on your Reels page. I'm gonna go ahead and land on this cover right here. I'm gonna hit done. As you can see, you can share this directly to your feed, but just remember this will be at a four by five ratio. I'm gonna click on it, and where it says crop profile image, you can adjust as needed, which is really a cool function, and hit done. And here you can rename the audio, you can also add a location if you want. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit share. And there it is, posted to Instagram Reel. That is technically my real first reel, but the first one that I did was my dog scruffing around in her bed, which somehow got 4,258 views, which, like I said, is a lot more than any of my photos will ever get, but I guess dogs are popular on Instagram. I hope you learned something about how to create your first Instagram reel in Adobe Premiere Pro. Like I said, this isn't the most ideal place that I see the future of filmmaking going, but I think as content creators, freelancers, filmmakers, whatever you want to call yourself, it's important to be able to adapt with the times. And even if you don't end up posting Instagram reels a lot, I think it's worthwhile to know the basics and the structure of it. So that way, when you potentially get asked by a client how to make one, or if you can make one, then at least you have that knowledge. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know if you've posted an Instagram reel or how you feel about it. If you found that you've had more success with that rather than things like YouTube or more long form content. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you on the next one. Peace.